Space, the final frontier. This is the podcast, State of the Federation. Its continuing mission. The preview of strange new ships. To seek out new builds and new combinations. To boldly go where no show has gone before. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to another broadcast of State of the Federation. I am your host, Delta Angel Fire, and I'm here to bring you the latest and greatest in Star Trek Attack Wing technology, strategy, and all other things really darn cool. Today on the show, we, of course, have our illustrious co-host. We have Tucker. How's it going, Tucker? Hello, everyone. Going pretty well. Um, feeling better. Um... Yeah, not much to say. Looking forward. I I can't tell you how much I'm looking forward to this top five thing. I mean, we're turning into David Letterman a little bit, but I'm kind of okay with that. <laughs> Excellent. And of course, we also have David. David, how has your week been? Uh, Tucker infected me. I'm sick. He Although infected I'm you from what? Two hundred miles away. Uh, about four fifty. What? No, more like a thousand. It depends on a straight line or an actual driving It is route. 850 miles for me to drive from here to Los Angeles, dude. Oh, okay. You. So probably more like 1250. Yeah. Wow, Anyways. That's, that's out of the country's uh, huge. Besides but... that, I have a tournament tomorrow, and I'm excited. Ooh, excellent. They'll have a, so, they'll have a slight advantage on you because of, uh, of illness, right? A virus. Yeah. It's RAF3. What could go wrong? You are infected. Virus detected. You are infected. It, it's not like my virus is going to make me all of a sudden run for the conduit. Hey, I did that once yeah. or twice in my last games. Yeah, but that's because you had the thing locked. <laughs> but of that. So for today's show, we were going to be going over the Hakona, which was recently spoiled by a third party, uh, the Harry Gamers. Thanks to them for their uh, their little quick preview for us. After that we'll be looking at A Matter of Honor, the next OP event that is coming up uh, that is, well, new. I see most, a lot of us are still actually going through, you know, some of the old Resistance 2 and 3 and stuff. Uh, and after that we'll be doing our top five list. Tonight's list is Underdog Captains. Uh, what exactly does that mean to you? It probably means something different to all of us, but hey, it'll at least be interesting, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right, so we are going to start on our lovely and wonderful Hakona preview. If I can, there we go. All right, welcome to Wave 12, the IRW Hakona. Uh, even before we start, how, how happy are you guys for this Romulan expansion? Um, about yeah. a... Seven and a half to eight out of ten. I'm not, not in terms of a super competitive, but um, in terms of a fluff and a bringing some Romulan up to a playable level. Yeah, I think it's good. Like it made me excited. <laughs> It's got big numbers. Think it's got big numbers. It's got some. It's got some cards that shake things up. Indeed. And we'll talk about those. How about you, Tucker? What was? What do you think about this one? Just, just as a quick preview. Um, I'm. I'm gonna make. I'm gonna make my position on this very, very clear. Um, I said, I think about a month or two ago on the podcast that I felt that. The, 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 the rough rundown of the factions was, at the time, Borg, Federation, Klingon, Dominion, Mirror Universe, and then Vulcans or Romulans. Um, now, a couple of things have changed. Uh, Dominion is now a solid third after Borg and Federation, thanks to Hideki's. Mm -hmm. But 
this I would say that this expansion in my mind makes Romulans about about par with Klingons because they got two very important tools that they really, really needed. Indeed. Um, do I think they're going to go up against the best that fighters and Borg have to offer? It really depends on how good one particular card in this pack actually performs in a real play environment. <laughs> but I have spent the last couple, I mean the last day or two, just making Romulan pure builds which anybody who knows me understands means there has been a very major shift in the game. What? A pure build? That's ridiculous. Well, it's, it, it actually winds up working out that a lot of the cards I need, and we'll talk about this when we get to the previews, but a lot of the cards I need I can actually reach for in Faction, which is the first time I've really wanted to say that about Romulans. <laughs> So let's, let's take a look at this mythical ship that makes you love your Romulans again. The IRW Hakona. This is a 30-point D Deridex. We love these things. And we're and it, for once, it is not the Derp Deridex, perhaps. It, I will mention this now. And then I will not mention this again. There is a possibility this ability will get screwed by Worf. There is. And to, in the meantime, though, we are going with the hopeful fact that they actually read the cards that they are ruling, and they actually read it correctly. So, we have the standard uh, lineup for a D-Deridex class. We have a 3, 2, 6, 4. Uh, its upgrade slots are a little different than the other D-Deridexes. It's got two weapons and three crews, so no tech slot on this one. Uh, and that's it's, probably going to be a sticking point in a little bit. It's most comparable to a Valdor. Indeed. It's even got an Which, extra crew. If you notice, it's the same reason the Valdor's fallen out of favor. Mm -hmm. It's interface generator, cloaked mines, advanced cloaking device are the three biggest tools that the Romulans have to fight Borg, Federation, and Klingons. Prior, and I can't take them. Prior to today. Indeed. So... It's ability now, which is finally seems like a decent ability, assuming, you know, it works as intended. When attacking with your primary weapon while cloaked, you gain one attack die for every other Romulan ship in your fleet. Max of plus four. So, assuming that this max of plus four means that we can get up to seven attack dice, um, this means that, well, we can get seven attack dice. It's a lot more than the standard three or four we're used to on, on you know, Romulan Warbirds. It, it's true. The reason I'm a little bearish on this particular ability is that if you really sit down and think about it, in order for it to be better than the Valdor, which again, the slots make this ship very comparable to, you have to be running at least three other ships. Mm -hmm. And that's hard, even in 120, considering that this one is 30 points. On the lucky side, Romulans have a lot of the smallest, cheapest ships there are, and we've been complaining about that a lot before. Right, but then as they die off, your attack numbers are going to go down. Mm. Yeah, that's not that's not too happy. However, uh, other things I noticed uh, about this is that it's not optional. So if you get extra attacks from, say, oh, counterattack, both attacks are going to be at plus four dice. Mm-hmm. Uh, things like Once More Into the Breach could help. Uh, in fact, Once More Into the Breach could be even really good because, uh, as we have discussed before, uh, Max Plus Four is a hard cap based on all of your other upgrades. So even if you have Denatra in here adding to this or Close Range, it is likely going to be that it's still capped at Plus Four. Uh, you can get the Minus One from the... What is it? The I just said it. Once more into the breach. Exactly. Which reduces your attack by one, but then you get can get the plus ones again from these, which in all likely cases. And, it, it, I mean, I would point out, you really you really are going to have to ask Worf about how this dice cap thing works. It may be that Donatra does apply on top of that plus four. Man, that would be all kinds of confusing. But that would, be, that would be nice. For the most part, let's just say that this thing caps out at seven dice and... Uh, and, and I leave it at that. 
So and I mean that's 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 nothing to to shake a stick at. Oh yeah, seven dice is your your Borg ships at range one is your battleships. Mm. Battleships range one, Hadekis yeah. range one. Mmm, fighters. And it's still on a fairly solid frame. It'd be nice if it had, you know, the one more hull and one less shield, but... Not I, a... I, hmm? I'm willing to say at this point that barring something like an assimilated vessel, if we see two vessels of the same class, they're gonna have the same stat line. Yeah, pretty much. Maybe we can get a mirror universe d Daredex. Too bad they didn't appear there. But we, that doesn't matter to us. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, as a ship, um, how would we put? How would you rate it compared to the other Romulan ships? What would you put it in the ranking? Because we've got the the Valdor, of course, which has fallen a little bit out. But then again, we also have the the big old Scimitar these days. The other thing we well, we we'll know the we'll know the uh, the. The, the dial will be the same, so it's going to have all white turns, uh, but it's, only going to, it's not going to turn around. It'll have the red back up. The question is is whether or not it has a rear arc, which I am highly doubtful of. Mm -hmm. so, it, would, it would be pretty shocking for it to have a rear arc. Yeah, so considering, cause with those considerations in mind, how, would this, how does this stack up to uh, the other big Romulan heavy hitters? Well, I would rather have the Valdor, um, and I would rather have the Scimitar. Yeah. And I'm going to say something that you're going to think is crazy until later. Science you ready? Puzzle. You ready? Go for it. Today, as of now, I would rather have the Kazara. What? Oh, I get it. Yeah. I, I see where you're now. going with this. Yeah. I'd rather have the Kazara until I'm playing in a 150-point game. Yes, in bigger games. So somebody asked me, um, somebody, somebody on the Facebook group did a challenge like, hey, why don't you, um, you know, do all of, uh, like, do, you know, all of the Dideradixes, take as many points as you want. And what I realized is I could actually get them all in a 200-point game. <laughs> Hakona, Kazara, uh, Adramir, and... Uh, Avatar. Yep. Good old Tomed. Right, and um, I actually... And, and it wasn't just, oh, I made this for two, 200 points and I had to use all of them. It ended up being that I, what, the fleet I wanted was five Dideradixes, which is not something I ever thought I would find myself saying. Excellent. Gotcha. And guys, if you just had a little hiccup in the stream continuity there, I apologize for that. Just uh, if, it, if it goes down for any length of time and it can't get it back up, just go ahead and refresh the stream and we should be back in, back in action. Had a, had a yeah, short I, disconnect. I think I want the, the Avatar before I want the Hakona, too. What makes Thermicare different? Two words. It yields. Huh? What is that? <laughs> that was the stream coming back, wasn't it? But no, there was like an ad. You, but I heard all right. an ad. So continuing on with our preview, we have the Hakona, which has now been trying to encourage us to use more Romulan ships. But what else comes on it? That is incredible and awesome. Let's start wow. with. Let's start with Admiral Mendak. Fleet action. Target a friendly ship at range one to two, including your own, that has no battle stations tokens beside it. Place a battle station take battle stations token beside that ship. The target ship cannot perform a battle station's action this round. This card may only be purchased for a Romulan ship. He is plus two to the captain skill. He comes with a talent, and he's four points. And he will only be four points because he can only go on a Romulan ship. Congratulations, Romulans! You have battle stations at last. Yay. One, one of your guys. So maybe no. not, so maybe not the same synergy with the Hakona, but for uh, two ship Romulan lists, this guy's gonna be pretty snazzy, eh? Am yeah, I right? No, not even that. 
I mean, look. No, no, no. This, no. this is a Romulan. You, you know that Romulan chariot, Vo, the Donatra chariot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You take this. You take. Or even well, for the recommended list, for the recommended points game. Now, now you take. Um, uh, Didera Dex. I don't care which one. Probably the Avatar. Instead um, of instead of the Donatra Chariot? Yeah. Well, because survivability. No, I'm 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 actually like right now my Romulan builds are two fifty point ships and a science vessel with the Natra and Mendak. Yeah. Well it depends on your points. But I'm saying take Mendak on something. Take Donatra and then take a Borg ship and use your fleet action to put the battle stations on your Borg ship. Yeah, I mean that too. <laughs> <laughs> or you could just do like everyone else does and just throw Ducat on there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm saying if you're in some kind of a ship pure environment, though. Mm. Gotcha. Yeah, even even in you, even in an all Borg fleet, you can bring Mendak on the Avatar of Tomid. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> but yes, uh, action access to battle stations. It's not quite as good as if it were a free action, but being able to transfer actions is pretty handy. Mm -hmm. uh, as has been we have seen before with like the Borg Queen who can hand out actions. Or and it's the, not like that. Denatra science vessel was actually taken any relevant actions anyway, so... Well, oh, yeah. if you take it on the Vo, it basically is a free action, because the Vo gets a free evade. Indeed, and it's not like you're, and you're not going to be doing any other kinds of actions with it, because that's pretty much all it's got. Yeah. I like it. He is the, he is the guy that you put in the back and let him do his thing. Mm -hmm. Or, if you really want to be cheap about it, you just put him as the captain. True. Yeah, and you can do a lot worse than Captain Mendak on a scimitar. I wonder how big he is. Four points. He should be six or uh, seven. Skill six. six. Oh, skill on the six. other side. Gotcha. Not bad. Yeah, I asked uh, Jason about that on the forum, and he said skill six. They posted a picture of it. Yeah, I didn't grab it though. I was I was too busy looking at our next captain, who is Taris. 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 Terrace. Terrace. Terrace the crazy. The crazy? Yeah, if you play Stowe, this, this woman is absolutely nuts. Ooh, that sounds fun. Uh, Four-point Romulan captain, five skill, one talent slot. When attacking with your primary weapon during the declare target step, you may discard one of your crew upgrades to target a ship that is not in your forward firing arc. Uh, I'm not sure how thematically this works, unless she's teleporting a crew out into the middle of space with a giant mirror, but, uh... Oh my god! I just... I didn't even think about this. I didn't even make this connection. I was wondering that, too. You want to know how it makes sense thematically? How? You ready for this? Go for it. Stowe, Star Trek Online. She becomes the empress of the Romulan, uh, empire, what remains after the supernova, and she's dis ultimately discredited because she's found to be experimenting with Borg technology on her own citizens. <laughs> and what are Borg most known for? 360, 360 degree arcs! <laughs> ah. Well, now we know where WizKids is getting their cannon from. <laughs> well, they made that deal with and Perfect we, World. We also know where Terrace is getting her cannon from. Oh, zing! <laughs> So, yeah. Um, yeah, as I've been saying all along, Param and Bokra, please report to the airlock. We've got giant mirrors for you. Fleet Captain <laughs> Paris wants to see you. <laughs> but yes, uh, she of course goes really well on the Hakona because the Hakona only gets his bonus to his primary weapon. So shooting in any direction with seven dice is something the Borg even have trouble with sometimes. Mm-hmm. And, I don't know, you could throw her on any other ship that has really big guns and points the wrong way. I could see her being useful on a Jem'Hadar battleship. Scimitar. Scimitar, not too bad. Scimitar is maneuverable enough that it can get away with it, with what it does though already. 
I could see her yeah. really. I could definitely see her really boosting either the uh, the the battleship or the mirror Negvar. And we yeah, love but since the, since the scimitar um, can keep its cloak, uh, you could uh, you could very easily find yourself in a situation where somebody is just outside is is like pretty far outside your range three to your side, and then you sensor echo them into range with Terrace. He kaboom! I like it. So, um. Not a bad deal, as we've seen before from the Borg. Uh, the 360 arc is a thing to be feared and wondered at. It's glorious. Paris is best Romulan captain at this point. You think so? I think so. I'm willing to make that claim. Mm, trying to think what would be better for it, but as a straight-up combatant, nothing's coming to the top of my head. Like The best besides next to her would be Torith, and she's definitely better than that. Exactly. And it's like, the thing is, it's so easy for Romulans to get... Um, even in this pack, by the way, there's a ton of just disposable crew members. They already have Bokra and whatever the other guy's name is. And uh, I mean, on a on a on a uh, on a Hakona or Kazara with fleet captain, the five crew slots pay three points total for them. Mm -hmm. That's five 360 attacks. You might as well be playing Borg. Yeah, things will mostly die by that point. Yeah, throw a massacre in there for free. <laughs> Nice. Uh, let's see, anything to add on that, David? No. Hmm. Terrace is great. We love you. Go on, yeah. your, report to the Hokona or the Avatar of Tomed. That would work, too. Or the Scimitar. I don't... <laughs> Other ships need more help than the Scimitar does. Yeah, oh, but I'm... Valdor. Ooh, yeah. Valdor's good. Yeah. Oh, by the way, Will? Yes. But Scimitar, this is an excuse not to have to take something to fire out your rear arc. Yeah. I don't know. I'd still rather have her put on a ship that doesn't have the, those options, though. Okay, yeah. I, I mean, look. All we're doing right now is discussing a, ba a, a, a bounty of options. <laughs> yeah. right? Of we're what we would do if we had multiple terraces. Yeah, what, what awesome thing is the most awesome thing? Indeed. Uh, so let's see. So we all agree that Terrace is awesome. We have one more captain in this pack, and that is Centurion. Uh, strangely, he is also unique, but I guess we can work with that. Uh, one point Romulan captain, two skill. When attacking, you may reroll one of your battle station's results. I don't know. For one point, there's not much, many other choices. I'd take him if I had that. People, but there's... Uh, people played Krell. Yeah. Well, Quell was a two point for three, wasn't he? He was two for four, but same ability. Yeah. But one one skill captains are pretty rare in the first place. I mean, we've got this and like Clark Terrell and Sar. And yeah. and the drone captain and Admiral Captain. Here. What's his name? The Romulan one that's not very good. Kieran. Kieran. Yeah. I I mean, I. It, yeah. If I have a point, I'd rather take Centurion than anybody else. Julian Pilot, that one Kazon guy, Redick. Yeah. Because why not? Mm-hmm. Mm, why not? Oop. I don't need my video editing right now. All right. So, yeah, uh, Centurion for one point. Eh. Uh, on the bright side, he is unique, so he can be a fleet captain. So. Yeah, but somebody asked Worf about that because uh, I'm kind of curious to see if he's supposed to be unique in light of Alpha Herogen and um, Some of the Pile. Mm -hmm. yeah, I guess we'll see. All right. Uh, so the one thing Centurion can't think is a talent, and the talent in this pack is Make Them See Us. Oh, real quick, someone in the chat asked, uh, would using the Centurion Captain interfere with the crew upgrade? No, because the crew upgrade is not unique. Mm -hmm. Indeed. It's the, same, it's the same thing you get with tactical drones. There is a unique tactical drone, but what it means is you can only run one of that particular tactical drone and as many non-unique tactical drones as you like. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So it's only one unique captain, but as many unique 
or as many non-unique crew as you want. Yep. It works. All right. Talent. Five-point Romulan talent. Make them see us. <sighs> Wall of text. While cloaked during the activation phase before revealing your dial, you may discard this card to target a ship that you have already have target locked. Remove your target lock from that ship. If you do this and your ship's base or maneuver template overlaps the target ship's base during the execute maneuver step, inflict an amount of damage equal to the current speed on your maneuver dial to both ships. Max of four. The ship whose captain has the highest skill number rolls a number of defense dice against this damage equal to the difference in your skill numbers. This upgrade may only be purchased for a Romulan captain on a Romulan ship. I hit you in the face with my face. Mm. Only real use I see is one of Shinzon's hidden talents. Yeah. But, but, it's a damn good one for Shinzon to have hidden because nobody's going to see this coming. <laughs> no one's going to see. We'll make them see it! <laughs> so, I have not gone back and watched this episode in quite some time. But based on Terrace's, you know, personality and performance, I get the feeling that this is going to be a pretty hammy line, and I would like it a lot if I went back and watched it. Make them see us! Yeah, something like that. Acting. <laughs> oh, I need that Picard reaction, Jeff. But as a, uh, as a card... Um, Doing guaranteed damage. Not bad. Uh, I was reading this and I wasn't actually paying attention. Do you have to be cloaked to use this? No, you don't. Yeah. Yeah, you do. The start of it says while cloaked. Uh, all right, so that is a minor problem. Uh, because you'll be taking damage straight to your hull while the opponents will probably be taking damage to, you know, their, their shields unless you're cloaking. And there's not that many cloakers around these days. Maybe more coming soon. But if you have the higher skill, you're getting defense dice equal to the difference in skill numbers. Oh, we've seen how good defense dice can roll. Yeah, yeah. if you run, but if you run into a skill one, and you're using this with shins on, you're getting eight defense dice. Mm, that would be pretty handy. It's also worth mentioning that you don't have to use this in the joust. Like, you can wait until their shields are down. Yeah, you can wait for it for, for some other time. Uh, the later it goes, though, the more you risk just uh, blowing yourself up along with them, though. Well, and if that's the killing blow, you win. Oh, here we go. Uh, if we use... Oh, hold on. If it's the killing blow, we win. Uh, that only applies to cars that specifically destroy your own ship. That would be another thing we would have to ask to Worf. Mm. Um, that, that also assumes that this is the last thing left on the field, though. Like, let's say, let's say I have this... Okay, let's say I have two ships to my opponent's one, but that one ship is going to shoot first and likely kill my other ship, which... Like, there are situations where it will win you the game even if you blow up your own ship. Mm -hmm. Because the thing is, and, and if anybody's wondering why I'm more up on this than I am than I usually am on suicide attack cards, it's because this doesn't make you roll for the damage. There is no chance of you whiffing on this. You are going to hit them in the face probably for four damage if you can manage it. Especially if you're doing something fun like putting it on a scimitar along with a Thaleron weapon. Yeah, where you can already have taken out their captain. Indeed. Yeah. No captain, okay. skill one, all of a sudden you have all those all those bucket loads of dice to roll in your defense Will? as well. Will? Yes, sir. Are there Klingon captains on your underdog list? Why are we talking about this now? Chang. Chang, Chang. Cha-Chang could do it. Chang no, loves to make people no. see it. I could see Chang saying this, too. Romulan captains only. There we go. Oh. Why you gotta get my hopes up, man? 
Because I forgot about that. Forget that. I'm going to put it on lore. Yeah, you heard me. I'm going to put it on lore just to screw with that. Good There's so lore. much text on this card, though. Like for such a simple well cloaked Romulan captain on a Romulan ship. Yeah. The other thing I was going to say about this card was, oh, let's just start doing the. Uh, Let's just bring back the Suicide Science Vessel Squad. Yeah. Apnex! <laughs> Apnex! Yeah, because it doesn't, it's, it doesn't care how big your hull is. It just cares how fast you're going. Yep. Uh, Apnex can do a four? Apnex Three. can do the four forward. Yeah. Okay. You know... The, the the thing is, it's like, this is a card, like, is this card going to be very good? Probably not. But, man, anytime, anytime it works, it is just going to be great stories. <laughs> but see, the Scimitar can do a six forward. Max four. Unfortunately. Uh, but it can do the four banks, can't it? Not okay. the Scimitar. Scimitar caps at three banks. Dang. I was hoping it had the four banks. Oh well, because there's nothing that has the four banks in Romulans then. No. Ion thrusters. Hmm. Maybe. Ion thrusters. Plus one maneuvers length. Possibility. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Well, so we are about halfway through this. So I think we need this. Let's speed through the rest of this and keep going. It's it's going to be hard to do that because we got a couple important cards coming up. Yeah, we really do. The next one we have is a very important card. It's called Disruptor Beams. Uh, mm. Five point Romulan weapon. Uh, five attack dice. Oh, sorry. I was thinking of a different one. Uh, range one to three. Discard this card to perform this attack. For every damage the defending ship suffers from this attack, roll an attack die. If you roll at least one hit or crit result, add one damage. Wait, it's discard? I thought it was disable. Sorry, disable. Did I say discard? I messed up. You did. It was, it was yeah. So it's like a slightly better quantum torpedoes. Slightly it's better quantum, quantum torpedoes, slightly that better. You don't need a target lock that might give you the damage. Mm -hmm. Comparable to um, forward weapons array? Secondary weapons array? Additional yeah. weapons array. Additional, wep additional weapons array. Because it gets one more attack, one more range for one more point. It just doesn't get the conversion. It gets an extra damage if you hit. Yeah. Uh, we don't see... Which is bad. See weapons array. We don't see many quantum torpedoes. I don't expect to see much of this. Mm -hmm. I could see this being used to bring a ship up to, you know, torpedo boat status without actually having torpedoes. Uh, yeah, like if you want to put this on an Apnex or a Vo. Mm -hmm. A question. Does it say forward or rear firing arc? No. Then I'd put it on a scout cube. Yeah, it's not a bad idea. Hmm. And a secondary weapon, oh. so they won't get the extra defense dice at range 3, and it's a lot of damage. Mm -hmm. Sure. I mean, I actually made a build for uh, peak performance that locks the opponent out of the uh, out of the uh, their deploy zone um, by being four scout cubes with Borg photon torpedoes and some various things to allow that to fit in 120 points. <laughs> and I would rather use I would rather use this than the Borg. Uh, because they're both going to be six points, and this works in all range bands and doesn't require a target lock. Nice. Yeah. yeah. So, not a bad card. Uh, it, it ha basically because it doesn't fall into the same trap that most other secondary weapons have of requiring you to spend your target lock, which is why no one ever uses them. Mm -hmm. it, 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 is, um, it is likely one of the better secondary weapons out there. The problem is that's not saying a lot. Mm-hmm. So that is Disruptor Beams. Speaking of good secondary weapons... Next we have Disruptor Pulse. Only a, well, How good could this weapon be? It's only a measly 3 attack at range 1 to 2 for 5 points? Man, that's ridiculous. Let's just skip over this one. Well. Okay, fine. Attack. Disable this card to perform this attack. During the declare target step, target every enemy ship that is in your forward firing arc and within range, and perform a separate attack against each of the target ships with this attack. Holy run-on sentence, Batman. 
This upgrade costs plus five squadron points for any non-Romulan ship. So, this is why I like the Kazara now, because the Kazara adds to all of these attacks. Four attack dice uh, for all of the ones that you would be doing with it. Uh, five, because I'm obviously using Donatra if I'm doing this. <laughs> mm, five dice against everything. It's a shame that the, uh, the scan enhancers don't uh, allow you to change all of your attacks anymore. Yeah. Would have been Six nice. if I want to throw Valdor on there. Out of out of arc plus one, Denatra plus one, Kazara plus one. Oh, let's throw triples on there while we're at it. Come on now. No, 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 no. Uh, uh, uh Drex. Mm, yeah, that would do it. Yep, convert everything. Yep. Yep. This card. You only get one crit, but you get every other battle station. And here's Cause, the thing. Because that's more. Because that's less broken than actually using the scan guys that would require you to find some way to get scan on a Romulan ship. So, here, yeah. here, here's the thing. This card, more than any other card in this pack, including Terrace, is what has me interested in building Romulans again, because when you sit down and look at it, many, many, many Romulan attack upgraders were not hit by the May ruling. You want a really good example, besides the ones I've already discussed? Go for it. The Azimer. Reroll any number of your attack dice equal to your damage. Each time you attack. Mm -hmm. Take a couple of hits to the hull, and then you have rerolls on everything. Yeah. It's also very nice that this weapon only disables. Again, doesn't require a target lock or anything else. Mm -hmm. Well, it couldn't require a target lock. Eh, volley torpedoes required a target lock. That's true, yeah. But, see, see, that's that's my point, is that... And the thing is, when you sit down and look at it, the Romulans get a lot of dice bonuses to all attacks. Now, the mm -hmm. major limitation here is that it only works with things in your forward-firing arc. And for every Romulan ship, that is 90 degrees. Right. Um, is this good on a 180? Yeah, but it costs 10 points. And this is one of the very few secondary weapons that I feel is, it, like... 10 points to attack everything in a 180 arc? Okay, yeah, that seems about right. Oh, yeah. I, I am still a big fan of using this in the same way the same way that I treated the uh, Energy Dissipator. I just want to throw it on the Reliant. Yeah. I was just running through my 180s, and Reliant went, oh, yeah, that's the one. <laughs> that's, there, there's another plus one die for you at range one. It doesn't quite get to the range as good as the Kazara at range two as well, but definitely has its no, uses. But... Doesn't have to cloak, which is nice. Mm -hmm. Drex fits nicely on there. Valdor fits nicely on there. All right, I'm sold. <laughs> yeah, the other things, you know, any any 180 degree forward arc is not bad with this either. It's not as good though on like a Kelding class. Mm. No, because there you want your five dice. Mm -hmm. Just call it a day. The place I've been looking at it is um, Constitutions and Constitution Refits. So the Refit um, has the cool. thing that lets you add attack dice too, doesn't it? Uh, no, uh, Enterprise Refit is primary weapon only. Um, oh. I'm just looking at it because it's a nice balance between durability, arc, and cost. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not too bad. Uh, you know what else is a fun little thing? Because the Reliant is nice, but it, it isn't super maneuverable. But you know what is super maneuverable and has a 180 arc? You ready for this? Uh, the Kazon uh, uh, Little the Scout. The Nistrum Raider! <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> I got it. Cakes on are going to be a thing. Got it. I'm getting more and more okay with the case on being a thing, and I'm not really sure what that says about me. Mm -hmm. I forgot about it, because that was the other thing I was thinking of, was not not even necessarily the Raider, but not too terrible on the, uh, the blind one either. Oh, the, um, the, the Rolaris from Kerr? Yeah. yeah, actually, interpret this for me. If you perform degree maneuver this round, during the roll attack die step of the combat phase, roll plus one attack die. Is that going to work on all the attacks or just one? Did it start with if? 
Yes. It's a conditional. It only works once. Ah. Because that was the same ruling that was done on Valdor. Yeah. The Valdor. <laughs> oh, wait. Does that mean that Captain Valdor only... Now I have to go back and recheck everything. Oh. Yeah, Captain Valdor would only work once then. Um... um. Yeah, because he says, if your ship is not in the target's forward firing arc, add plus one attack die. Yeah, Kazara would only... Kazara says if, too. Are you sure about this? Mm. No, it's, no. Not, it's not that it... Oh, that's the what makes it that way. It says, if you performed the maneuver. No, 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 no. Will, it's what it is. is uh, Valdor says this round. It's the this round ruling. Gotcha. You sure? Yes. Pretty this sure is how fine. Scotty works, too. If it's if a card says, add attack dice this round, you only get that many dice. But Cause if it was it the Because there was the same thing... Because I thought I had it associated as the same thing with Captain Riker from the starter. Uh, Captain what? Captain Riker from the starter set. If you are attacked this round, you may counterattack, blah de blah de blah And that only works once as well. Um. Yeah, but it's that's um. There's a conditional in there that I cannot communicate precisely at this moment, but it is. You're in right. There. I'm looking at the card text. This this game is a mess. Um, but my understanding is that for attack dice edition specifically, if mm -hmm. it does not say this round, you get it on every attack, and if it does, you only get it on. You can divide it as you choose. Right, cool. which is why Denatra gives you the addition on every attack. Right. But the Valdor green only gives you on one, which is why, like, on counterattack, you don't get the boost. Mm -hmm. That was my understanding. Yeah. This, this <laughs> game is nice. we will We will continue going on with the rest of the cards now. Yeah, but, I, I think that's best yeah. done on another day. We love Disruptor Pulse. It has a lot of cool uses. It's amazing. Yes. It's, a, it's a huge game changer for the Romulans because now, not only can they do something nobody else can do, but it's a really good thing. That was what Cloaked Minds were for. Oh yeah, that too. <laughs> Moving on. We have our first of the crew. We have the Romulan Helmsman. Two-point Romulan crew member. During the activation phase, if you reveal a red maneuver, you may disable this card to treat that maneuver as if it were a white maneuver. No ship may be equipped with more than one Romulan Helmsman. Uh, this guy does better than the Borg power node. Mm -hmm. And he, uses only, he only uses up a crew slot. And he's cheaper. I'll take him. He's a good guy. Yeah, I haven't seen Power Node used, but uh, it may be that it was just a little bit overcosted, and maybe we'll, this guy will see use. Mm -hmm. Cause I would use that because this guy is pretty much equivalent to Power Grid from the Vulcan ship, and mm -hmm. uh, slightly slightly less versatile. Mm -hmm. But he can let, he can allow Romulus to do what I love to do with the, my Vulcan blind, and that's just back up into eternity. Well, and Power Node disabled two of your shields. Which was a big... Yeah. Yeah, that was why the Borg one sucked. Yeah. The, the Vulcan one just disabled itself to give to take a power token, which was nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's, it's the slightly different of taking the power token or doing the white maneuver, which means he combos again a little bit better with Chekhov, who's the only one that really cares about white maneuvers. Mm-hmm. Mm hmm No, he only works. You know, it's only counting revealed maneuvers. I was saying, trying to see if there was some way I could finagle him into letting the flagship give me a red maneuver, but that's not the case. No. Mm. All right. Um, next card. Yeah. But yeah. Oh, I like the I like the wording that they made him ship unique, not unique. Mm -hmm. but, yeah. Kudos on that. Yeah, they seem to be more willing to do that recently. I'm happy about that. Yeah. It's like they've learned or something. You know, you thought so, and then you saw that one uh, repair card a while back. Yeah. I, I think they just haven't learned how to do repair cards. 
Romulan Sublieutenant. Four point Romulan crew. Action. Discard this ship to target a ship at range 1 to 2. If the target ship has a hull value of 6 or greater, that ship must disable two of its active shields if possible. Otherwise, that ship must disable one of its active shields if possible. This upgrade may only be purchased for a Romulan ship. Fourth of five, you have been unassimilated and made to suck. No Romulans. Romulan sub-lieutenant is not projected stasis field. Nope. They still get to attack. It doesn't stop them doing anything, really. Uh, the ships that have a hull of six or greater generally have three shields to start with, so that's not going to get you anywhere. Uh, I'm trying to think, what is any possible reason you would need to just disable shields? Raymond boarding party? And that would require you to disable all of their shields, and two is not enough for all of their shields. One is not enough for all of their shields. I would discard this guy. Wait, can I do this? I would discard this guy to lower the shield on my Federation fighters so I could beam tribbles to them. Mm -hmm. And I like even then I wouldn't point. because he's too expensive and I know there's someone else that does it cheaper. Yeah, it's just, this would have been, um, it seems like this would have been a lot better back in the days when you could steal from yourself. Mm, I miss those days. Yeah, me too. They were fun. Oh, hey, by the way, we may have forgotten to mention this. There's a plasma pr torpedoes. You don't need it. Oh, yeah, it's the basic plasma torpedoes. It's the same ones in the starter. Yeah. It's, it, it, five dice, reroll, blah, 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 takes target lock. I hear it's actually that, that cold front over east is starting to move down to Florida, so maybe we should, uh, maybe we should let uh, Will have this one, David. Okay. Yeah, no, I almost been, had my sweater on earlier. Yeah, and it's been unseasonably warm up here, so I hey. almost had on shorts today. So you're actually in the positives instead of the negatives. Oh no it 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 never got below. It never even got to freezing up here. Yeah. Wait, seriously? I've been freezing my butt off on the side of this mountain. Hey, let's talk about cards that aren't Romulan sub lieutenant. Romulan yeah. security officer, maybe. Sure. I wonder how they I always like... have to specify that it's Romulan, even though it has the big Romulan symbol in the faction color on the bottom. Romulan security officer. And it looks like this pack comes with three copies of him. Yay! Following, like in, the, learning. following in the Vulcan Commando's footsteps. Uh, yes. Two-point Romulan crew for each Romulan security officer equipped to your ship, including this one, your captain skill is at plus one. When defending, you may disable this card to re-roll one of your blank results. Not bad. Uh, so, especially for two points, has a continuous and a disable effect. So, here's the question. Is this additive or multiplicative? In other words, if I have three of these, does my captain skill up, go up by three or nine? <laughs> three, because it says max plus three. Ah, but that's limiting that ability. Go take your complaints to Worf. There are three separate instances. Yeah, this is this is definitely a Worf question. This is this is like how the Borg were handled back in the CCG. For each Borg, this card's strength is equal to the number of Borg. Yeah, or slivers in Magic: The Gathering. Mm -hmm. Um. Now, the 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 thing is, is that. I, I, yeah, we need to warp this. Um, I would I'm love sure. to have plus nine skill. Holy yeah. crap. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, how would you like a fleet captain that made that three points for plus nine skill? Mm, beautiful. Uh, Lovely. Shinzon can fire at skill 22. No, Shinzon skill eight or nine? Nine. Nine. So, yeah, 18, Mendoc to 20, Fleet Captain to 22. Well, I mean, we're still talking about... Are you still talking about just using three of them? I'm saying if three of them would let you go to plus nine. Well, if oh, three God. of them would let you go to plus nine, six of them should let you go to plus 18. No, he's right, yeah. If that limit only applies to the individual card, 
then there's oh god. You're only limited you're only... by your crew slots. Okay, yeah. So this has to be just plus one for each. Yeah. And again, wor to... worded by people who were not math majors. <laughs> or even yeah. took math in college. Or, or high school. CG. Or high school. Or middle school. Or played okay. a CG ever. Like... Okay, so assuming that... We're assuming the max is plus of, three. Of three additional skill points from Romulan security officer. We're going to go with the sane ruling. Yeah. yeah so and, and I think... an additive bonus. Each one gives you one additional skill point. Is it still a bonus when it's disabled? That's what no. I want to know. Nope. Yes, card is blank. Because when, when it is equipped to your ship, which is oh. the ruling they made about that stupid other card. Yeah. Mm. See, here's where one of the weird things gets in. I feel like that would only apply if at least one of them was still undisabled. Y y you would be right in a logical realm, but... It was um. What was that other card that literally did nothing because it uh the target locking one I think it's the target lock from the defiant from the ISS defiant mm -hmm. pack. Yeah, they as long as this card is on your ship, then blah blah. blah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, they basically had to errata it without saying they were errating it, mm -hmm. which <laughs> actually caused issues that they went back and said, "Oh yeah," because it caused issues with costs and dispersion field. Yeah. yeah. Well, what they did was, I think that's why they ended up changing cost and dispersion field, is because they needed, while equipped to your ship, to work this way. Mm -hmm. But I think, like, if you ask them, they're going to tell you it works when it's disabled. Okay. Which, which I'm perfectly fine with. But I, I'd also prefer that it would say, as long as you have at least one non-disabled. Or if they could just say, you know... This works even. This ability works even when disabled because otherwise, the general blanket ruling that disabled means your card has no text does not actually apply. Yeah. Well, like that's the only rule in this game that doesn't actually apply. Yeah. Anyways, so the, the other, the, device, the other, the reason we're actually talking about disabling is that when defending, you can disable the card to reroll one of your blanks. We like rerolling things. Yeah, we it's like it's rerolling lots of things. It, it actually works when you take the fleet captain, the mm -hmm. Klingon independent that gives you the crew discount. What's Other actually that? I'm not paying two points per to do that. What, what's funny to me is I was actually shopping earlier, and I went back and I listened to the episode we did on cloaking. Mm -hmm. And it's really funny if you go back and listen to it and lighten this pack, because we're saying what we're saying is things like cloaking doesn't have quality. Well, now we have Mendak and these guys. We also always had a Vec that does all of what these guys do in one card, but even that is not always good enough. Yes, but what I'm saying is, is now we have options to help mitigate that weakness. So sure. it becomes more of a trade-off and less of just a bad idea. So, things that work well with this. Um... I feel like I finally have a reason to run Liviana. Yeah, yes. Liviana loves these guys. Since they'll be disabling all the time. But right. really, for more reliability, I just want to throw the Doctor on here. Yeah, well, why not both? Por que no los dos? <laughs> throw Liviana and Flocks on here, because then she could try to Liviana her Flocks. Sounds a little dirty. Well, mm. I mean, one reason that I like... Uh... You know, if, if you have the Kazara, uh, which is tech, weapon, crew, 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 you go Liviana, Dr. Tech, and three of these guys. Bam, easy. Mm, nice and easy. And then, of course, you bring in, uh, you bring in the Klingon fleet captain, the independent Klingon fleet captain, and get two more of these dudes. Mm. Mm, six dice, all the blanks getting re-rolled, and Mendak so I can have battle stations. Mm -hmm. I wish I could have Romulan Dreadnoughts again. We missed uh, Dreadnoughts. Yeah. But, but all of uh, that comes in under 50 points, I believe. Hmm. <laughs> it sounds pretty close. It 
should actually come in under 50 points. I'm doing the math. Yeah, 34, even with the fleet captain, 39. That's five crew mm -hmm. at one point each, and a four-point oh. doctor. You I mean, you shall have a free talent and three points for a weapon, probably. Two points for a weapon, but yeah. Woo, quick and dirty math. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so that was the Hakona, the entire pack, and um, definitely seems worth picking up. Yeah. Even if it is going to be a 6D Dare deck sitting in my box, taking up a huge amount of real estate. Yeah. Stupid the problem, giant bird. I mean, all the things except Plasma Torps and Disruptor Beams are going to be useful. So. Oh, no, we, were, but, we, we, we decided Disruptor Beams were useful. Potentially. I, I just don't see it. They, on Scout Cubes, yeah, that's true. Yeah. I do see that. It, it, yeah, <sighs> scout cubes and gunships. I'd rather use I'd rather use that than the tri cobalt warheads. Oh god. Well, okay, yeah. <laughs> tri cobalt warhead is so bad. Range did we, did three we? uses a target lock, no conversion, nothing cool about it. I mean, Range come on. Three only. Mm -mm. Uh, for those of you who don't know, we're talking about the what, the Tholian Tricobalt Warhead, which was the only card we didn't know from last week, and it did match almost my specifications exactly. Took Requires a target lock, does six dice of damage exactly. However, to make it better and worse at the same time, it is only a range three. It only costs four points, but it can only be purchased for a Tholian ship? Or is it plus five for a non-Tholian ship? Probably just only a Tholian ship. Who cares? No one's going to run it. Don't do it. Ramming it attack. Is plus five ready. for a non Tholian. Yeah, because I'm going to run that. Yeah. All right. Uh, so, yeah. Hakona, definitely get it. Tholian, if you're weird, get that. If I you've like... already won one, ignore it. Completely. If, if you really want to play exploding long darts, pick it up. I mean, some people really. The Tholians will have their day. I really think this. But it is not this day. <laughs> it is the day in the Mutara Nebula, as far as I know. Actually, I think the day might be called Peak Performance, but that's a ways off. Eee, that'd be fun. All right, then. So that has been our Wave 12 uh, preview, review, lovely time doing. Uh, only took us an hour. Mm -hmm. Hey, since we're running behind, do we want to skip... A matter of honor? 